Hey folks, this is John with Fortress Training. Listen, I'm doing this entirely virtual online firearms training institute we're creating for you. And one of the first things I believe is safety. And I want to provide this information for you so you can share it with your kids, your grandkids, or a loved one who maybe isn't aware of guns or maybe scared of them or whatever the reason is, uh, I just wanna give this to you. So it's gonna take about 20 minutes or so, but I just wanna share with you some knowledge uh, about how to be around guns and some basic safety stuff for you. And if you do have kids, I am gonna speak to them during this. So you, know, you watch it once and then see if you want them to see it and um, hopefully they get educated and they understand the, the importance of safety when it comes to guns. So let's start with this. I'm gonna put up a little uh, slideshow for you and we're gonna get going here. Okay, so um, I just want to welcome everybody. Again, if you've never done anything with us, uh, my company's Fortress Training. We travel throughout the Mid-Atlantic, particularly in Maryland. We do go to Pennsylvania and all the way down to South Carolina uh, for various training programs. And uh, we try to do things a little different than most. And throughout our pages, you'll kind of discover that. So let's talk about what we're going to do today. And hopefully this can provide you some education for your, for your family. Firearm safety. Let me just stop here is the most important part of all gun training. The most important thing. There's nothing more important than firearm safety. You've got to be safe, whether you're a beginner or you're a Navy SEAL, you have have to have paramount to all safety in what you're doing, because it, it, it is uh, critically important. Just like around, we'll talk later, safety of knives or even safety of a car. And we'll, we'll talk about that. You, you have to stay safe. So let's just start with this a little bit about me. Um, you're not gonna see rifle, shotgun. Here's what I do. I do travel and I teach one thing and one thing only, the handgun. How to stay safe, how to use it as a concealed tool, how to get your family home, how to get away from the situation and how to become really good, proficient and efficient with the tool if you need it. So that's just a little bit about me, not really what you're here for today. You're more here for the safety end. So I will get on with that. If you are a citizen of Maryland and about probably two, three other states, you need to know there are special laws in place that will uh, go against you if you have children. In Maryland currently, it is if your child is under the age of 16. If you're under the age of 16, you must, must separate the guns and the ammo or prevent the child from getting it. So what does that mean? That means either you separate everything or maybe you, um, have a safe or a gun box and there's something there next to your bed that you can get to if you need to quickly, uh, but the child can't get to it. So Maryland need to know 16 is the number. If you do want to look that up, you can look up that law. And if you want to look up Maryland laws at all, um, you can always go to, go to fortresstraining.com and then go forward slash MD law. So Maryland law, MD law. And that one, criminal law 4-104, and all the other ones uh, are there for you regarding what you need to know in Maryland. So just a little bit of, if you need anything else, it's there. So I just want to get to that first because I'll make sure you're covered. Now, when it comes to safety, if you have children, let's, let's ask them and also you guys, I want you to guess. When it comes to home firearm safety or, or any safety when it comes to guns, which one of these two do you think causes more issues? Ignorance or carelessness? Someone who doesn't know or someone who knows but screws up? Hmm, any idea? Well, let's talk about a few things. One, um, this looks like an actual, let's get red tape on this. This is a training tool that it's actually a Glock. And uh, there's nothing inside this gun anywhere in here. It's completely empty, but even if it was, it would not fire. Uh, this is used for a, kind of the next level of training that where you actually use what was one time an operating firearm, which is rendered inoperable. It will not work. It doesn't function. What it does is allows you full operation and it, it shoots a, I don't know if you can see this. No, you probably can't, but it shoots a laser out of the front. So it allows you to be able to train with this, but it doesn't actually fire a bullet. Um, so it's a, uh, a training tool. So this is one of the things that we would use. But let me just give you an example of the reason why I mentioned this. If I came over to your house and sat that down on your table, boom, and I said, man, look at my brand new gun. And you didn't know anything about guns. Would you pick it up or would you be like, what the heck are you doing? Odds are what the heck you're doing. 
and that's ignorance. Your first, your first tendency, I guess, is to pull away from it where a careless person may be like, they think they know what to do, but maybe they don't. Let me give you an example of something. You see what you're looking at here? Well, let me pull it in a little. Um, the blue thing in the back there, that's a box. And then the browns, that's concrete. And then if you look down here uh, to one side, I guess it's on your left side, there's a black mark. That black mark there is where the bullet hit the concrete and then exploded into that box. And since that bullet there didn't hit me, I thought I'd take a picture. Did you get that? So I brought that back. And you're like, where the heck did that happen? Well, let me tell you. It happened at the York County, Pennsylvania, York County Sheriff's Pistol Range. Did you get that? York County Sheriff's Pistol Range. There were nine law enforcement professionals there from various agencies that were at Glock's Academy to get certified as an instructor in armor. And what we did was we would come back and it was kind of under a pavilion. And, and, and it was one of those, you know, those little state park or county pavilion things that looked like it was kind of built next to the sheriff's range with a little shed and had four tables, those picnic tables that weigh hundreds of pounds, those things. And what we're doing is we're loading and unloading guns. And we got to a point to where uh, it was time to go back down to the range. And one of the guys said, I think, let me see if I could do that without this thing cutting it off. That's the only thing with that virtual screen. I think I'm going to take my gun and exchange it with another gun. And what he didn't realize was his trigger was cocked. And he said, when he picked it up, he thought he just pulled the trigger back because he already cleared it, but he didn't. And when he pulled the trigger back, bang, that bullet hit that ground. Fortunately for all of us, that gun was pointed this way and not that way. Because there was a man literally on the other side of that table, two feet from him, three feet from him. It went that way. Needless to say, he failed. And it was very reckless, very dangerous. And the reason I share that is a lot of times people are so worried about new people with guns. This man served two tours of duty in a war. He served as a law enforcement professional. He currently was an NRA training counselor. He's been teaching for over 40 years and he forgot, simply forgot. He had a bullet in the chamber, one bullet in the chamber. So anybody, this can happen to. Anybody can get their foot caught on the accelerator of the car. Anybody can slip and stab themselves. Anything can happen, and this is one of the things that can happen with firearms. He was dismissed from this training, and he wasn't invited back, but they happen. Now, on the other side of the world, the other side, is a friend of mine who, him and his family, what they do is they train children. That's all they do is train kids in firearm safety and education. This is critical. This is critically needed, right? The dad there, that's Chip Belly, Melissa, who runs it, really. She's the one that makes it all happen. She's a mom. She's done this picture. Uh, but the two boys, that's Matthew. That's his youngest son, the one that's in his arms. And then that's Will uh, Bellamy. So when I met them about eight years ago, Chip, the dad, was handing out gun locks at one of those community events. And I got a gun lock and a brochure from him. I said, what do you do, man? You do firearms instruction? He's like, well, we got a nonprofit down here in South Carolina. And um, we educate kids for free. And people donate or churches donate or whatever. Uh, businesses to support what they do. I said, man, that's really neat. I said, wow. And I, I grabbed a brochure and I looked at it and I asked him this question. You have to tell me the rest of the story. You see, because the rest of the story is, why did you decide when you named this nonprofit to name it after your son who's in your arms. And I'll tell you the reason why. Matthew went over to a friend's house and his buddy said, hey, Matthew, um, my grandpa just bought me a brand new gun. Would you like to come over? And we can go shoot something out back, whatever they want to shoot. Matthew said, sure. So they went over to the house. Grandpa may have taught or the kid forgot or whatever it was, um, needless to say that the bolt of that rifle was forward when it should always be back. Needless to say, must have forgot or didn't tell him that you need to always make sure you, you never ever point that rifle at anything you're willing to shoot. And you always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. 
Because what he did was he lifted it up and pointed it at Matthew and pulled the trigger. And one round didn't hit him in the head, didn't hit him in the shoulder. It literally was a bullseye right through his aorta. And Matthew never moved again. And it cost him his life. Now, whether that child knew or didn't know, here's where the problem comes in. Chip and Melissa, what they do is they believe that children should be educated in safety. Because whether that child was trained or not trained, he came across something and didn't know what he was doing with it and obviously didn't have enough education. The reason I mention that is on one side is Chip and Melissa saying we need to educate people in South Carolina, they're invited into the school system to make sure kids are educated so when they find something or stumble across something, they're not ignorant, they have a clue to what they're doing. There are actually people in this country today that do not want children educated in safety. They just wanna remove the guns, just get rid of them. Instead of educating kids, like maybe you were educated or your parents were educated and you were what we call responsible because you learned. There's actually people that are against what Chip and Melissa are doing and they wanna just simply remove it. Well, they're gonna have to remove a whole bunch of stuff if they remove that and they never will. But the point being is, is education, knowledge is king and reigns over everything when it comes to guns. And Why somebody in this country would not wanna educate children in safety of a gun, I can't even wrap my mind around that, but there are. But anyway, Chip and Melissa do that. It cost them, unfortunately, Matthew gave his life for this but now they're saving, saving many, many children. And so that's hopefully what we do here as kids. You've got to be safe. Let me, let, me give you, let me give you some basic rules. If you're like eight, 10, nine, six, and you're watching this, let me give you some basic stuff. If you come across anything you don't feel comfortable with, even though this is for firearms, it could be a big knife you don't feel comfortable, or it could be anything that you don't feel comfortable. Stop. Just stop. Don't touch it. Just get away from it leave go get mom and dad you know when when you have a responsible parent what they're going to do is they're going to teach you about it so the curiosity doesn't come around you and they'll teach you and that's what they're doing now is they're trying to educate you you know you could teach a kid whatever they want to learn at, at various ages so they understand and are responsible and that's what we try to do and that's what we're trying to do in this video but for now Four simple rules are just stop, don't touch, get the heck out of there, go get mom and dad, and they'll all figure it out together. Is that cool? So hopefully that, that helps you out real simple so you don't run into problems. Don't run in fear. Don't act like it's a bad thing and run from every gun or every knife or every baseball bat you see because they could be dangerous. Be responsible. Be mature. Deal with it. Go get some help. We'll figure it out together. Good? Okay, we're done. Okay. So around the house, here we go. Home firearm safety. These are just some basic things. These aren't written in the rules and the laws or anything, but these are just basic things for you to do around your home and just when you're handling a firearm specifically, not other tools, but, but a firearm um, that, you, that you, would, you would handle. So basic stuff for you. You can discuss them with your family um, and you can figure out which ones you like and, and which ones may help you. And they're just a few. There are many other ones, but that was just a few I came up with. I do want to talk to you about locks. Depending on where you live is depending on the type of lock you have. Um, Project Safe Child, they, they're child safe. They do a, um, a thing where they talk about the cable lock. The cable lock is the number one lock in the United States. Every manufacturer of guns, every um, gun store, they have cable locks. They are the number one gun lock. But depending on where you live, they may not recognize it. Uh, like, for instance, in Maryland, a cable lock, even though you're going to get one for free, it's not recognized um, as a lock. Neither is one of those trigger locks that go over the trigger, you know, both sides that prevent you from being able to pull the trigger uh, and you lock it. That's not recognized. What is recognized is something called a bore lock. And the way bore locks work is they actually go in the chamber of the gun. So one bore lock, an Omega, would go in the back here. And then the other one, which is called a Franzen, F-R-A-N-Z-E-N, would actually go in this way, uh, in the front, and then you lock it. I prefer the Franzen over the Omega for the simple fact that it is um, one that is easy to see, it's quicker to get to, and they work incredibly well. So if you're looking for a good bore lock, 
or you look for a Franzen. Now, if you have a revolver at home, you can always put a padlock over top of it, um, over the strap, and you, you're fine, and you can't close it. So if you have that, you, you can use all kinds of locks. They do make the bore locks for revolvers also. So if that's something you're interested, you can use that. Now, I do want to talk to you about this. Um, if you have a gun, you're responsible for it. You're responsible for it 100% of the time, particularly if you have kids, because as we talked earlier, kids can wind up thinking they're toys. L let me speak to this group of people. You have no children. You have no grandkids. Either A, you haven't created them yet, or they've aged out and they're gone, and they're on their own. So you're kind of by yourself. Now, whether you're married, with someone, or by yourself, this is who I'm talking to. You have a right to leave your gun anywhere you want. You could leave it next to your bed, you could leave it in your dresser, you could leave it on the sink, in the kitchen, you could leave it next to the toilet. You can leave it anywhere. That may not be the smartest thing you've ever done in your life, but you could. I always suggest that you have quick access to it, easy access to it, but not the bad guy. You know what I mean? Like you know where it is, but not everybody knows where it is. Okay, that's responsibility. Let me talk to you. The reason why I mentioned this is here's a story of, of kids that live near me. This is Charlotte, her buddy Sean. I'm going to keep the story short for you just for the sake of time here. But um, what happened with Sean, the, the guy, um, they, they both go to the same school, by the way. They're both in the 10th grade. They're both in the same class. They know each other. Um, Sean got into some trouble when he was young and he decided that he was going to break into homes now. And long story short is, is that on New Year's Eve a few years ago, he broke into Charlotte's home and at one o'clock in the morning, she came home with mom. She encountered Sean and then mom got involved. Now, Sean's freaking a little bit because mom's talking about calling 911. I'm assuming the conversation may have went with, don't call, yes, we're gonna call, don't call, yes, we're gonna call. Well, Sean freaked and he had a little secret. And I'll tell you what the secret was. About a month or two earlier, he was breaking into a house and he broke into a man's home that um, didn't live with him, just him. No kids was it. And uh, inside one of his drawers, I think it was in his office, guess what was sitting there? A gun. So Sean had a little secret. He had a gun on him. Mom didn't know it. So Sean pulls the gun out, confrontation, I'm assuming, escalates. He shoots mom. Charlotte turns on him. He shoots Charlotte. Mom's injured. Charlotte's dead. The next morning I wake up and I'm like really kind of nervous for two reasons. One, um, I look at this and I'm like, oh my God. And see, the pictures weren't here yet. Like the sun paper, they didn't know who the kids were. They didn't have pictures of the kids or anything. All you got was this, this article I've kind of put up here. But Ellicott City shooting and then 15 year old is suspect. And I thought two things. First off, one, how did the 15 year old get a hold of a gun? Isn't it Maryland state law? Well, what happened was, was he got a gun out of a home where the man had every legal right to leave it wherever he felt like leaving it. Sean had a criminal activity of breaking and entering and then burglary and stealing of a firearm. So he was able to access it that way. So the 15 year old had the gun. So I'm like, how did that happen? And the second thing is, is at the time I had two kids in the 10th grade. They went to Centennial High School, the next school over. And I'm like, oh man, if this, if these kids are at my kid's school, this is real, I'm going to have some things to deal with. And I'm like, oh, let me find out. And I'm typing away and my daughter comes down the steps and she says to me, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm just trying to figure out where these kids went to school. And she's like, oh, they didn't go to my school. And for a half a second, I was like, that's good. And I was like, oh, okay. She goes, yeah, the boy name was named Sean and the girl, she was, it was Charlotte. And I'm like, Sean, who's she's like, I don't, I don't know who clue Sean is, right? And I said, oh, okay. She's like, but Charlotte. And I'm like, Charlotte who? And she's like, remember last year in the summer, we had that little picnic? That's Charlotte. You see, folks, I don't care if you're on a range with experts or you're a kid that's in a house and doesn't know what he's doing, or you're a victim one or two removed of a crime that happened. 
anything can go wrong. It's just like if your car stolen and people are killed with your car, it can go wrong. Or a kid gets behind your wheel and they don't know what they're doing and they go down the road at 95 miles an hour and they kill themselves. Everything has the potential of being deadly. And that's why we have education and training and responsibility. So we learn these things so we don't have this. So if you have kids, just understand the importance of it. Keep your gun safe. We good? I thought so. Okay, so let's move on. I want to review a few things. If you get this right, we'll move on to the last section. Is that fair? Okay. So here it is, firearm safety review. If your gun is next to your recliner, you're good. Is that basically what that's saying? If you just lay your gun next to your recliner, you're okay. You good? No. Anybody can grab the thing. If the gun doesn't have a magazine in it, in other words, the thing that now, this isn't an actual magazine. This is an inert magazine, but the thing that holds the bullets, if a gun doesn't have one of these in it, it's safe to leave around. Is that true? No, because there could be a bullet in this chamber right now. You see, if you come across a gun and it looks like this, there's a very good chance that this is an empty gun. Matter of fact, I'd probably guarantee it. And if you came across a firearm, and it had a magazine in it and it looked like this, there's probably a very good chance there's a bullet in it. But does this have a bullet in it or doesn't it have a bullet in it? See, we don't know that. So what happens is, is that in those situations that I talked to you about on the range at the sheriff with the sheriff's department, Matthew, both those situations was there was no magazine. There's one bullet, one chamber, one pull of the trigger in both those situations. And so you need to be careful, make sure that um, the gun's unloaded. We do a class called Operations and Mechanics of a Firearm. And when you learn to take it apart, we share with you three ways, three ways of how to um, make sure that you don't have a loaded gun in your hands. And, and that's on our virtual page, also Operations and Mechanics, um, that we do this virtually just like this. So we do have those classes available for you. And then last, is it best to store with everything? No, don't store it with everything. So let me give you a few things and we'll, we'll kind of finish up with this. The mechanics and operations. First off, always check. You're responsible. Don't take a, hand, a gun that could be loaded in your hands from somebody. When you get the gun, here's what you need to do when you're exchanging it. Keep your finger off the trigger. Make sure it doesn't touch the trigger. If it doesn't touch the trigger, then it can't go boom. I'm gonna give you four rules for adults in one second. But this is one of them. The other is make sure the muzzle's pointed in a safe direction, always down, never like to the side, because if you turn, you're pointing a gun at somebody. So keep the muzzle pointed down at all times. The action, that's also known as the slide. Make sure that's open. And again, in the ops and mechanics, we teach you how to make sure you know how to do that so you can always um, know how to operate a gun. And the chamber well, which is where the magazine goes here, that the mag chamber and the magazine well are empty. And double check, triple check. What I do is I look down the gun, I tilt it forward, I look down the barrel, I'll look down the gun, tilt it forward. If I need to, I'll put my finger there. I just want to verify both physically where I visually and physically inspect it to make sure there isn't anything there. And then I know it's safe. And then um, if you're exchanging it, put the firearm down, let the other guy pick it up or girl pick it up. Don't, don't just hand the gun to him. So there are just some basic things for you. Um, for safety checking of a gun. So let's see how well we did today. Um, firearm safety rules. And uh, let me give you four of them. If you pass this, you get an A. If you miss one, you get a D. If you miss two, watch the video again. Okay, here we go. Always treat every gun as if it's loaded. All the time, no exceptions. All the time, it is a loaded gun that's in your hand. Treat it that way, always. Point the gun only in a safe direction, preferably down and away from everything. Always keep your finger off that trigger. If that gun, for that gun to go boom, it's got to have that little boom switch or trigger pulled. So don't put your finger on the trigger. What I do is I keep it what's called high indexing, which is my fingers actually up here because then you can see the trigger where the trigger is. And you can also see my finger. So it kind of stays away from the trigger. And then make sure you always know what's around and behind you so you can know where the bullet's going because you're responsible. 
Now there's a pattern here. And if you kids, if you're watching this one, what's the pattern? You're smart enough. There's something up there that has over and over and over is being repeated. And you could probably pick it up fast in your parents. So why don't you tell them now, what is the pattern? And the word is what? Always. Say it again for me. Always. Not anytime you feel like it, but all the time. Even if you don't feel like it, treat those things with safety. Is that good? Well, listen, I appreciate you coming. And um, we are doing a bunch of stuff. Not only do we do things live, but we're doing classes online. So for your family and for you, and there's all kinds of things from beginner classes and we're developing even tactical classes where not only we use those guns, but I can get you access to these guns. This is a shot indicator reporting tool. And what this is, is this is called a CERT gun and it actually shoots, this shoots lasers, but it allows you to fully operate this gun for the most part. Uh, it, no slide moves, so you can't, you can't do that, those drills, but you can use it to develop your skills. And I, I do want to say something about these. I don't care if they're special force operators or world champion pistol shooters. They train off range far more than they actually go to the range. You would be amazed if you end up doing the, these types of training, how much better you're going to be as a shooter because you've removed that component of actually having to go to the range, spend the money for the bullet, spend the money for the range time. But you're developing muscle memory you're developing pathways between the brain and the, and the muscles, and you're developing that coordination and skill, and you become a much better shooter. So check that little page out there, fortresstraining.com forward slash virtue. Listen, I just, I just want to say thank you um, so much for coming today and um, spending time with me, and thank you for being here. If you do have any questions, you can always contact us, check us out. If there's anything we can do for you, let us know. But listen, stay safe, educate yourself in safety of everything that you do. Obviously, it's important for you to understand firearm safety as much as it's important for your kids later on to take driver's ed. Would you ever let them take driver's ed? Would you ever get behind a car without driver's ed? Probably not, because they could kill themselves or kill others. So um, treat this just like driver's ed, if that makes any sense. Okay, stay safe, shoot straight, and I hope to see you one day in Fortress Training class. Take care now. Bye.